In September of 2013, the Tour of Alberta will be the first major professional cycling race ever to be held in the province. I started socializing the whole idea of a, of a stage race, a, a multi-day professional cycling race in Alberta about 10 years ago. Um, it was a dream of mine, absolutely. I thought that Alberta deserved it. It was such a great province, great people. You know, the, the physicality of the province is amazing in all our cities. So when Alex Stida, who was the first yellow jersey in North America, came into our office after, with this idea, with this vision, and six years of peddling it, uh, with the opportunity to have a major event in Alberta and he came in and he said I think I think we have the opportunity to put this together and to watch the response of the government of Alberta just embrace it and say you know we're gonna put the first chunk of seed money into this and really bring this grassroots vision to reality it was a miraculous journey watching it from idea to where it is today this is the first major stage race with a two-point level ranking that has ever been held in Canada and that is a, a certainly an achievement for this organization. All of these teams are very good riders and they're top international teams which are carded as top athletes in the UCI ranking. And that it, the only reason we're getting them here is that we're a 2.1 ranked event. It will be the biggest stage race in Canadian history, starting in Alberta's capital city with the Subway Edmonton Prologue. Yeah, so a prologue is a time trial. So what happens, this is the only day that the cyclists race by themselves. They're not in a team environment. 7.3 kilometers against the clock. The riders go at one minute intervals. They're not allowed to draft off each other. It's an individual event. They can't get any outside assistance, for example. Once they're completed and all 120 cyclists go through the route, the fastest time wins. And that person or that cyclist that wins gets the yellow jersey and they start the next day as the leader of the race. You'll be able to start to see who the strong guys are, what the storyline's going to be, which teams are have guys that they're bringing to the race to try to win the overall. Each stage will have a time collected over the five days. So the eventual winner will be the one with the least amount of time over the five stages and he becomes a general classification. You could have five different stage winners. You could have a mountain classification. You, you've got a sprinter's classification, which will be another race within the race. So you've got several races going on within it. You've got the best Canadian in the race. So you have many races going within it, and you'll see all these riders identified with the different jerseys representing what that is. Bike racing is very tactical. It's not very obvious to the uninitiated. It's a team sport for a number of reasons. Number one, each eight-man team will come into the Tour of Alberta with a goal, to try to win the overall general classification, the yellow jersey, try to win the, the green sprint jersey, try to win the climber's jersey, or maybe try to have their guy be the best Canadian. The key for the teams is to get their guy on the podium. These teams will help one another. Some people will get water bottles back from the team car, bring them up to the riders, bring the food up. They'll protect their, their, their rider for that stage and ride around him so that he's protected from the wind. So they'll do all of those things. So it's not merely one person that's trying to get to the finish line. Um, it's a lot of people working together. Each team has a team leader or a designated team leader. There could be two team leaders. Uh, and those, say there are eight riders on the team, there'll be six to seven riders working for one person to ensure that they get up there to get the results and try and win the overall race. Cycling is a blend of individual and teamwork. You have to be able to carry your own weight and, and, and you know, be able to really um, put it all out there on your own. But you need a team to support you, absolutely. The athletes that are coming to the Tour of Alberta are the best of the best. These are the best elite athletes from around the world. When you get a chance to see these guys up close, in person, you will be shocked because they are so fit. Their upper bodies are so skinny. Their legs are so defined because that's all they do is eat, sleep, and ride.
With planning for the Tour of Alberta well underway, one team owner with strong ties to the province was keen to take part in an exciting new initiative. Gaining access to professional cycling is extremely difficult. It's, it's a hard sport. You have to, it's a lot of hard knocks. There's not a feeder program. There's not a way for, for athletes to be able to really break through. They need to be able to go to high level races. And so with our developmental roots in our program and me having obviously heartstrings in Alberta, uh, it, it worked out great just to be able to, to work with the promoters and be able to you know, give that opportunity to one athlete. Appreciate the opportunity to come back to uh, one, of my, one of my native roots being in Alberta here. Uh, that's where my mother's family's from. And, and uh, we've got a UCI team that's been invited to participate in the Tour of Alberta. And uh, the, the hometown hero project that we put together with the promoters, uh, we've been pretty excited about. So this you know, all culminates today. Um, Chris, the, the race winner today, uh, has earned a spot on our program to race in the Tour of Alberta. Yeah. By winning the Making the Tour qualifier at the 2013 Banff National Park Bike Fest, Calgary's Christopher Dahl won the right to compete with Team Smart Stop in the inaugural Tour of Alberta. It's a, it's a huge deal for me. This, uh, this race is, is pretty special just because it's in Alberta. It's in the backyard. One of the stages will roll right through all my local stomping grounds that I train on, that I ride on. So it, it's going to be really cool to, to get onto those roads, racing with some of the best pros in the world. And just the opportunity of, of being able to race the Tour of Alberta and have that exposure is huge for me. It's really hard to get noticed especially, and an opportunity like this is a great way to get, get my foot in the door with uh, Smart Stop Mountain Khakis and, and uh, hopefully progress from there. And now, the hard work begins. It's not easy at all. It's a lot of dedication, a lot of training, a lot of hard work. Christopher's always been a very focused sort of lad, and um, I think a lot of it does come from himself. He's very organized, he can arrange so many things within one day. It's very good with time management, and the dedication, I think, comes from his heart. We always encourage our kids to do the best they can and follow their passions, and for Christopher, definitely, biking is his passion and always has been. I feed him <laughs> a lot of food, <laughs> all the time, it seems. Lots of grocery shopping and feeding. The food is huge. They do burn a lot of calories, so we always make sure we have healthy food in the house. In grade 11, he would have piano lessons, violin lessons, and orchestra. But cycling, you cycled six days a week, and your seventh day was your rest day, but his rest day was leaving school, sneaking out of class early to get to violin lessons. And then straight from violin lessons, he would drive himself to orchestra at Mount Royal College. And that would be his day off, and so he would just bring extra lunch um, for nourishment, because he needs frequently, as you can tell, <laughs> he's always eating. <laughs> I've always tried to support kids and kind of create a supportive home environment. And then we also see them now supporting each other when they're in their sports or just challenges in life, right? So it's, it's kind of neat to see that. I think we follow our kids' lead. So we introduce them to cycling because we've always cycled all our lives. I used to bike tour as well. So because we loved it, we got them into cycling. He was cycling when he was barely three. We've always been active, especially outdoors. We do a lot of outdoor sports, and cycling has always been part of our family. We've always enjoyed it. Chris has kind of taken it to a whole new level. I'm sure everybody in our family could do, like, if they, if they want to, they could do each stage. Like, they could ride the, the 200 kilometer stage if they wanted to, but it just wouldn't be in four hours, like the race pace, it'd be in maybe like seven or eight. Or 10 for me. Or 10. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher's been mountain biking and doing crits for a long time because in our old house, we lived on a cul-de-sac as we do here, but we had a driveway that would join to, into the backyard. They'd open the gate, go down the little green belt pathway, then go back up the driveway, down the green belt, they'd go round and round and round, or they'd just do circles in the cul-de-sac until they 
Yeah, we go off. Rather dizzy. Yeah, we yeah. go off little roots and stuff as jumps. That's yeah, right, yeah. Mom, really. Mom, look at these roots, we're gonna fly. Dad had 911 ready yeah. to go once. Yeah, we never really so told big. a kid, never tried to restrict them too much, but I remember they built this big jump and they said, we're gonna go off of it. And I was pretty leery, so I said, okay. So I, I pre-dialed 911 on my phone. I was standing there with my <laughs> finger on the button. And I said, okay, <laughs> go for it. I initially started as, as a mountain biker. Like, that's when I, fir I first started racing. You know, was it five, six years ago, mountain biking. Just went out, just figured, why not, why not try racing? So the entire went and raced, and actually ended up winning the, the category I was in. It was like the novice category starting out, but it was, it was a lot of fun, and it was really cool to see. So after that, I just kind of kept wanting to race. So I started doing a few just fun road races and then really enjoyed it. So after that, just kind of slowly raced more and more road and eventually got on with the provincial team. And that was really motivating and, and thought it was awesome. And then I went to cyclocross nationals and ended up getting second there and kind of surprised everybody. From there, it just kind of took off. So the following year, got more intense. Um, raced road nationals, mountain bike nationals, just kind of every race I could get to. Very it's open. not a race, it's just a ride. That's mm -hmm. our motto. Yeah, no, it's a race. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for him it's a race. <laughs> for us, it's just a ride. In my mind, I can secretly beat it. <laughs> not so secretly, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and in your mind only. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> They're super supportive, but awesome family. I, I couldn't do it without them. Now that the Tour of Alberta had become a reality, the route had to be mapped. And in a province with a geographical landscape as varied as Alberta's, it would take the cooperation of countless communities to create a truly world-class course. It's really about how all of us can work together, whether it's Edmonton or whether it's Red Deer, Calgary, any of the smaller cities uh, you know, within, within the province to try to build um, some connectivity. And this race, in itself and by itself is able to do that. And I think it's quite remarkable that it's gonna create a much stronger relationship in rural and urban Alberta. We're a thriving, exciting community in Alberta, and we're so excited to be able to kick off the six-day pro cycling tour. First time in Alberta, first time in Canada. Uh, we've got a very uh, enthusiastic group of volunteers that are planning uh, just a jam-packed day full of events that you can come and participate in. We want to make sure that we continue the party the entire day, even though we're a start community. The pageantry and the festival aspect of it is, is a big part of it. Not only is it a race, but it's, it's bigger than that. It's, it's excitement, it's culture, it's, it's uh, an opportunity to express your community and promote those things. In cameras, we're going to have a number of opportunities throughout the community here to be at the side of the road and the finish and to, to, express, uh, to express yourself in terms of maybe your business, your, 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 uh, your school, your organization. You don't watch this one on TV if you're from Red Deer or the immediate area because that would be just missing out on all of the fun. When they do their three laps through the downtown and up over Michener Hill and through the parks, it's going to be really, really exciting to see. It's a unique event in the fact that you have world caliber athletes coming to a small town something that most people will have never had the chance to see without traveling to California or to go watch the Tour de France. So why not come to Strathmore and watch the same caliber here? Having a bike tour of this magnitude come to Okotoks, it basically showcases where people can go as a cyclist. But more than that, it's great entertainment and I think we're going to have bike day in Okotoks on that day. So it's exciting if we can get you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people on bicycles, on our pathways and so on, it would be phenomenal. Uh, this is going to be a party. We want to see people having fun here in Drumheller. As mayor, I've traveled many, many communities around Alberta and find that's one, a lot of things that we don't know about our fellow communities. And this is a way to showcase our, our, our communities throughout the, throughout the province and throughout the world. On June 20th, when record flooding ravaged much of southern Alberta, organizers were faced with some difficult decisions. And ultimately, we're left with no choice but to alter the race's crucial fourth stage. It's very unfortunate. The route was supposed to be one of the hardest legs 
um, starting in Black Diamond and then ending up in Canmore. But I believe that there was some, some issues around that route on Highway 40, and it's very unfortunate, and I hope the organizers in Canmore and ourselves can work together to be able to showcase Canmore as well as Black Diamond and work together to create a wonderful event. At first we were like, yeah, it's, it's too bad, we're not going to see it, but we're still going to see the race, we're still going to go and perhaps help out in Black Diamond. Some of us might even work with the Tour of Alberta for the week. The big part for the tour was making sure that the riders could safely descend Highway 40 from Highwood Pass. And, you know, riders will approach approximately 90 kilometers an hour. So if there were to be an accident, the road surface, the quality of the road surface is not perfect. And to run an international stage race, you have to have perfect roads. There's going to be a little bit of bumps here and there, but on the descents in the areas um, that require uh, rider, sa rider safety concern, it's very important that that is approved. Back home in Calgary, Chris Dahl continues his arduous training regimen while also finding time to coach his own group of fledgling young cyclists. There's that the, uh, the Gomer Velodrome. Um, so it's, it's uh, the Velodrome also called the track as I kind of moved through the different groups and moved through the, uh, the Olympic Oval Cycling Program. I kind of um, wanted a way to give back and, and something that I could, I could work towards as well. So I took some coaching courses and, and became a certified coach. And from there, uh, basically, yeah, managed to get the job as the, the head of the, uh, the link group coach, which is ages 13 to 15. The program that I coach right now, I joined that back when I was 14 years old. There's probably about 10 riders here today, and we're going to do a few different intervals, a few drills. A lot of it will be motor pace behind the, the moped. See you, dude. Yeah. See you guys. Good work. Awesome job today. We'll see you, Sam. You guys are all racing this weekend, right? Yeah, not me. Wait, you're not, Spencer? The pieces are in place, and now organizers of the inaugural Tour of Alberta are ready to bring the race to life for thousands of anxious fans, many of whom have never experienced the exhilarating thrill of a professional bike race. I'm just super excited. You know, I, actually, I can't believe it's actually going to happen, honestly. Uh, all the work and effort from uh, the team that we have with the Alberta Peloton Group, with Dwayne Veneau and our executive director and all his staff. It's going to be a great event. and. And, um, you know, there's stories out there of people that watch Tour de France and they see different parts of the country that they wouldn't normally see and they instantly say, I want to go there. Or maybe I might even move there. Well, we believe that some of those same things will happen with this event. For those of us who don't necessarily understand, you know, road races and what they all entail, what a great place to come and learn and, and uh, really immerse yourself in the race itself and then be able to watch it as it tours the rest of the province. Everybody, to a certain extent, will love to see this pack of people going past them. Whoosh! You know, and, and what does that mean? Boy, look at those guys go and, and how they're doing in such close proximity to one another. It's going to be exciting. There's lots of challenges that we've overcome and the team has come together and I'm really, really proud of them. After winding through some of Alberta's most picturesque and challenging locations, it's only fitting that the race should conclude in Calgary, where local hero Christopher Dahl will bring it all home with his new teammates in front of friends, family, and thousands of enthusiastic race fans. You know how people are always like, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And it's like, you try, you try to think. I don't know, it never came naturally to me to be confident. And then I realized that one race at the World Cup last year in December, my coach said, do this the way you know how to do it and you'll do well. And I believed him. And I did. And everything went better from there. I guess sometimes or you have those races where they're like like turning point races, you know, where you, you kind of go from, I don't know, where, where something just clicks and you just kind of get it and you can kind of take yourself to the next level. 
I think depending on how true of Alberta goes, it could very well be a turning point race. If I, if I can get a decent result or ride a break all day or do something that really gets me noticed, then absolutely it's, it's going to be a huge turning point because all the top teams in the world are there and all the top teams from North America are there. So everybody's, everybody's got their eye out and they have a bit of publicity coming into it. So hopefully I can get noticed. All you need is the chance to be in the race, and it's like you've got the, yeah. you just, you're in the race, and now anything can happen. And it's just getting that ticket to be there and be like, show what you can do. Just at the race itself, helping out the team with anything I can, and trying to get some breakaways, get some TV time off the front of the pack, and then maybe a top 10 would be really awesome. But we'll see. I think that camaraderie, and that's it in the cycling world. There's so much camaraderie and support. Your competitors when you're racing and your good buddies afterwards. And I think that's a pretty neat community, actually. I'm hoping that the event also introduces the sport to some kids who might not have found a sport. Not everybody loves soccer or hockey or those very, very team-oriented sports where your practices are often together, whereas Christopher, he's often independent by himself, training in the basement. So if you have that kind of mentality where you have that discipline, it just might introduce some kids to the sport. And then they'll hear about the National Training Centre right here in Calgary. And Edmonton has clubs too that really help kids learn about the sport and they introduce them to all the different disciplines within the sport. So just maybe we're going to get a few amazing athletes. It's crazy how when you look back you realize the small, like these really small moments that just make such a big impact. So, watch out for those moments. <laughs> the Tour of Alberta starts on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2013 in Edmonton. And after six days of stops throughout the province, winds its way through downtown Calgary on Sunday, September 8th. Come along for the ride.